Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, if you're new, a warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, a equally warm welcome to you. And this will be the last analysis, uh, Sunday analysis video for the year. Um, I wish you a uh, really merry Christmas if you're celebrating, and a happy new year. I will be returning in the new year as well as uh, reopening the. Um, mentoring um, trading 180 mentoring so if you are interested in starting off the new year uh, in the mentoring group and really learning about fundamental and technical analysis uh, supply and demand processes then uh, head to the trading 180 site and uh, you can see when we are about to open up the uh, the mentoring for a limited time only as well for many of you who have been waiting for a few months you'll know that um, I'm really kind of serious about this and uh, I don't take any in anybody there are going to be there is going to be criteria that you need to pass in order to get into the room as I am not going to take on you know brand new traders who don't really know how to you know trade uh, at the minute so um, so yeah head over to trading180.com if you're interested and um, uh, the um, mentoring will start within the, the within the new year I think about the 5th of January anyways I'm going to get into um, going to be a short one this week simply because there's really uh, not that much to talk about on other pairs I cover the main pairs and um, and yeah let's get into it so uh, starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index uh, last week's analysis pretty much still on the chart forgot to uh, get rid of this but um, nothing's really changed from last week on the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength um, against uh, major currencies like the euro the pound and the yen and uh, we are you know we've been really kind of the money's been made trending um, uh, and uh, price discovery and now we're really between this uh, supply and demand zone uh, where prices are now um, just I guess you wouldn't call it ranging, but it's really um, a fair value auction between buyers and sellers. So um, pretty much for the rest of the year, we're probably going to be uh, every, all traders are pretty much taking the, the time off Christmas off. So not to say that, the, that prices won't move from here. Um, you know, they could move, you know, higher or lower, but um, it's not really going to matter. The real trading is going to start to take place in the new year. So just be careful uh, with low liquidity because the market um, can be easily uh, moved and manipulated and um, as it searches for liquidity. But um, uh, going into 2022, my really bias is to the um is to the upside with the dollar. So any pullbacks, you know, that, that happen over the next uh, week or two or couple of weeks, um, looking for buying, uh, buy trades. And again, we don't buy necessarily on the dollar index. Um, it's really um, looking at this as confluence. And if prices do come down to any kind of demand zones, then we're looking at dollar crosses as um, uh, as buy trades. So uh, to kind of confirm that as well, just uh, an article on pound sterling live euro dollar uh, Wells Fargo forecast dollar strength in 2022 and 2023 and uh, I have to agree as uh, the fundamental analysis is the same as my own so the dollar's run of strength that saw it dominate global FX markets in 2021 is not set to end soon according to one of the uh, one of the largest lenders in the United States Wells Fargo say they anticipate further dollar strength in 2022 and 2023 suggesting a long cyclical upturn for the currency is underway so forecast for the year ahead show the dollar's rally will push the euro dollar exchange rate to uh, uh to uh to below the one tens and we'll get to the euro dollar um targets in a second the technicals so within uh, sorry sorry with the fed having started the tapering of its bond purchases which is generally positive for a currency and expected to raise rates um uh, beginning in the second half of the year of next year which is, again should be also uh, appreciate the dollar given our revised outlook for federal reserve monetary policy our outlook for the u.s dollar has also evolved says nick uh, brennan broick uh, international economist at wells fargo so we now expect an extended period of u.s dollar strength and see broad-based 
uh, greenback strength throughout late 2023 compared to our previous forecast that the US dollar strength would only last into the early part of 2022. So um, again, the smartest guys in the room giving you the analysis that you know their forecast and what they think. That doesn't mean that obviously we're going to see you know dollar strength and just keep going to the heavens, right? You going to get pullbacks. Pullbacks are bargain prices. If you think the dollar is going to go higher, then you don't really want to be a buyer at the high, do you? You want to wait for pullbacks and then look for to buy the dollar for cheap. So that's pretty much what we're looking to do with the dollar, what I'm looking to do with the dollar anyways. Um, so again, not really going to be trading over Christmas or anything like that, but we're just waiting for prices to kind of come down to certain areas. Um, and then look for buying opportunities. Um, looking at the dollar yen, dollar yen, um, uh, again, similar thing here. So we've got really some demand right from there and the new demand zone right there. And prices did kind of come down to that zone as well. So let's uh, put that here and here. So there's some demand right there as well, demand zone. But I think any kind of major pullbacks, in fact, I'll just delete that matter of fact because prices did come down into this demand zone here so um any real pullbacks into that zone i think are really going to be nice zones and even more so if you can get that one uh 112 what's it 111 50 um area if prices can drift down to here i think the beginning of 2022 that's going to be really really nice for some dollar potential upside so, um, but again if we do get some risk off sentiment at the moment we haven't really got a strong supply zone here i think you'd have to really wait for prices to come up to that 115 high um and then looking for any kind of short trades if we do get more of a spread of the omicron variant or um or covid 19 um starts to really kind of get out of hand um uh, moving on to and i'm going to skip the dollar swiss and the dollar cad nothing really has changed from last week so if you want to see the analysis from last week uh, you can look towards uh, uh go on the youtube channel and look at last week's analysis i'm going to focus on really just the majors the pound and the dollar make this a bit of a short one so uh, pound analysis Again, I was saying that last week that this was an area that I thought uh, would see the uh, the pound, you know, would be a really nice area to kind of short the pound from. And if we, if we was looking at getting short and I was actually right. So looking at that, you've got, you know, support there, bit of resistance. But again, it's more about the supply there with support and resistance. It's confluence. So price is pretty much pinged off of that area there and uh, went to the downside, even though, even though, the Bank of England, um, you know, uh, basically uh, had a surprise rate hike. So the UK decision follows hawkish Fed uh, moves signaling tightening and most economists anticipated no change from the Bank of England on Thursday, but they surprised everybody by hiking rates, which was again, like I said, a, a massive surprise. Now, um, I was speaking in the, the, the members group that generally nine times out of 10, uh, a, 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 a a rate hike is generally um, bullish or appreciates a currency but in this one it's a bit of a strange one simply because they're hiking rates more out more because of to, to try and cap inflation rather than out of necessity and um, I guess because they're trying to um, you know maybe uh, with the economy's help so what you need is a growing economy to help support um, um, rate hikes and at the moment the uh, the UK economy isn't doing fantastic so in fact a rate hike could potentially could actually potentially hurt the um, the uh, the UK economy although that remains to be seen um, it might be known as what is known as the dovish hike so um, we did see something like that this week I did say to the guys wait don't buy don't FOMO in and uh, look at what happened you know on the on, on the pound dollar you know a lot of people are probably looking to get long in here and now I've been caught on the wrong side of the market so um, so yeah that's uh, that's pretty much what's happened and uh, yeah technically really nice zone to get short on don't know whether anyone would have got short there um, you know fundamentally but uh, again technically you did see that happen again we're probably going to see prices uh still you know pretty remain within this uh 1.33 uh, level to 1.3150 area and i think that like i said the uh, the 
trading is kind of coming to an end this year so um the next couple of weeks are probably going to be um you know again a, a more of a sideways moving market with potential manipulations here and there so just be careful when uh trading um any of these currency pairs and i think uh, if i was looking to take a trade on this currency pair it'd probably be more to the short side i would probably say that area there unless unless the pound unless the pound really gdp does growth domestic product does really kind of turn around then i'll probably be long on the pound but until that happens i think for now um i would probably look for a potential uh short trade um you know in and around this area here this uh one three four area or maybe on a lower time frame for those of you who know about stop hunts somewhere around this area here would be a decent area for to look for a potential stop hunt uh, and finally looking at the euro dollar so the euro dollar again um part of this resistance is to the downside so we've had you know this level touch once twice three times um and again we know again the euro dollar targets potentially are at the 111 so 111 is, is around here so there's potential you know uh, 100 or 150 pips potentially to the downside I'm not saying it's going to go there now it could obviously pop up this year come up to this area here and then come to the downside nobody knows the, the exact timing of the market but um the way that you know we look to trade is just to look for pullbacks and look for bargain prices because the dollar was a bargain right here we know that for a fact because prices went to the downside right so this is just a pullback and looking for any kind of short trades my preference would be for you know anywhere around this uh, 1450 area if we're looking at daily supply zones to get short into the new year so let's see what happens there not looking to buy the euro anytime soon so um so yeah that's pretty much it for this week i know a short one i know uh, some of you guys wanted to see uh, maybe uh, some of the other currency pairs that i normally uh, analyze but again um go over last week's um, analysis not much has really changed from last week fundamentally or technically so um that's pretty much me for the year wishing you all again a merry christmas and a happy new year and i look forward to working with all of the guys that are looking to join the group next year have a great um like i said have a great christmas and new years and i'll speak to you all soon take care